the growth team asked me, hey, Min, you got to get out to Japan. Things are very different than what you would remember um, back in 2018, 2019. Uh, that's when we actually had a, a team member present in Japan, sort of exploring uh, various opportunities. And eventually we end up leaving because, uh, you know, overall the, just like the regulatory environment, just the, you know, the, the web three ecosystem, it wasn't very developed. So we were way too early when we actually started looking into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Inside Icon. And with me, we have Min. Min, it's been a while. How are you been? Good. I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Busy, but good. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't done this in uh, a couple of months now, so uh, a lot That's to catch right. up. Huh? Yes, yes. Because last month, I think then the workshop crept up and there was just so much happening. And then after that, you were off traveling to do more icon related work. So it just got a bit tough to try and schedule a time. So yeah, anyway, it's happening in April and, and, and we'll get a bit of a download of everything that's happened in the last two months. But, <laughs> but you're well, uh, the last two months have been good. Uh, yeah, tired from traveling. But other than that, I am I'm good um yeah how about yourself i mean we we saw each other a month ago so <laughs> yes yes that was good um it was a uh action jam-packed four five days yeah constant yeah. go 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 so that was good but uh, i felt like we achieved a lot everyone on the team crystal clear um what we're trying to uh achieve especially the next 12 months so that was really good to to get yeah. that uh, in-person sync up yeah, mm -hmm. we should we should definitely. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about it in more detail uh, today. Well, literally, my next question. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that's it for how you've been. So let, let's jump into the workshop. Oh, so that's many, it. Uh, yeah. That was so short. I mean, okay, okay. <laughs> Anything else you want to highlight, man? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, just yeah. I mean, my my last couple of months obviously has been half of it was just traveling to Asia. So. Mm. Spent almost, uh, I think, 10 days in Korea, came back to the U.S. for 10 days and then flew back to Japan for 10 days and just came back uh, last week. So yeah. um, still jet lagged, uh, honestly, really? just been sipping a lot of caffeine. Yeah, yeah because it's the other, other end, other time zone. Uh, yeah. It, uh, Japan and Korea is a one time zone that suits Australia because it's just an hour or two behind. So um, <laughs> e even though it's a 15 hour flight, but everything else is it's in the same time zone. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so you're back, you're kind of getting settled. That's why we're having these sessions. Um, but yep. I, I think Min will take you back two months ago. So the workshop, um, mm -hmm. what was your core goal? Like uh, the workshop for context for everyone, like that's where all the foundation members come together because everyone's like at a different parts of the world. Yes, we have uh, weekly and daily catch ups on different things, but this is like where everyone's in the same room, having a power, working through um, all the all the things we need to work through. Um, in your eyes, what was the focus of the workshop and uh, how did you feel? What did we do? Your yeah. words. So, I mean, like you just said, as a remote first company, um, it's absolutely necessary to do in-person meeting. I mean, we are, we get together at least twice a year, um, formally through these workshops. And obviously we try to do encourage people to go to conferences and such. So, um, so I think more than anything else, the primary focus is basically for us to meet up, to loosen any build up tension that accumulated over the months, uh, you know, of, of Slack messaging each other, a lot of fiery discussions that we've had, right? So I'm sure, yeah. I mean, we're all good professional people and nice people, but, uh, you know, tensions build up because we're all human beings and we got to, you know, you know, whenever we meet in person, you know, a lot of those tension goes away. Um, mm. So we spent 
obviously a lot of quality time in a very short time frame in a vacuum, right? Mm. Um, so we do a lot of team building activities. So I would say that is, for me, the highest priority is making sure that the team um, bonding is there. We do team building. Um, so we enjoy ourselves by eating together, drinking together, playing together, shopping together, go to amusement parks together, right? So all of that uh, kind of adds to the uh, experience of, you know, working, you know, intensely uh, on this project. So I think we all need it. We need that from time to time. So, I mean, I won't go any further, but that is um, the top of my list. Um, obviously, of course, uh, we work, right? This is a workshop. It's a serious mm. workshop. So when we get into work mode, everyone is fully focused and immersed into, you know, group discussions. And, um, you know, I think one difference about this workshop was previous workshops were all about, you know, each team members coming out, talking about their uh, strategy and views and, and, and things like that, whereas this workshop was, you know, we were focused on having intense discussions and, you know, we, our focus was to discuss strategy or pretty much anything on how to build the number one cross-chain DeFi experience uh, mm -hmm. in this industry. So the goal was, what does it take? Um, and what, what do we do to provide that, become a number one cross-chain, um, you know, DeFi, uh, you know, experience. Um, so everyone was given a homework assignments to come prepared. And I was very, you know, it's expected, but I think everyone came very prepared to, mm. to talk. And at the end of the workshop, I think you could definitely feel the energy and the excitement. It, it was a level that I haven't seen since we actually launched this, the icon project back in 2017. So um, I think, you know, that was really, really exciting to see for me because the, just the team um, getting together and believing in the future and believing that this change is right for us, uh, the whole enshrinement concept, the whole uh, focusing on the user experience part, uh, network-owned liquidity, um, and actually seeing and beginning to see the advantages of our technology and our solution over a lot of our competitors, you know, although I think there aren't too much that do, you know, the, the stuff that we're, we're how we're Im imagining things, right? So I think all of that kind of, you know, gave us sort of the confidence and, you know, I think the excitement that, you know, again, I haven't seen in a while. Mm. Yeah, I, I think part of that, like, as you said, one of the activities was doing a mm -hmm. bunch of research on various protocols and side-by-side -side competition to kind of go, okay, well, what are they doing well? versus uh, what are we doing or what are we lacking for that matter mm -hmm. um, to make sure that uh, we have that in the plan to execute, to get sorted so that we're on the same level, if not um, better in yeah. terms of feature set, et cetera. So that was what okay. I like. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's what you're going to ask like, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Like, what yeah, was, so, what was the most exciting part for you? So, so for me, it was, yeah. Look, I had a lot of learning, so it was good to get some takeaways on some of the challenges um, people faced when going and exploring all the different protocols. And, like, you know, just to give context, like we're talking mm -hmm. Osmosis, ThorSwap, you know, things like that. It's like running through 
And what I would do basically all the time, constantly, without thinking, yeah. it was good to get a different perspective and see some of the hurdles people faced. Um, and uh, at the same time, getting that uh, kind of feedback when uh, people were using balance as well, you know, to try mm -hmm. to compare. So I enjoyed that. Although at the start, I was, you know, it's like, okay, uh, I wasn't sure. It's everyone, it was... I wasn't sure at the start, but then it came together and I started seeing, yes, okay, this is making sense. I can see some of the blockers and, you know, there were some cool features called out from Osmosis perspective and the support side, how they implemented that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that component of it. Um, I also actually liked to at the tail end of the workshop um, mm -hmm. trying to map out certain processes, like um, especially um, when we're thinking about chains where we're close we're launching on a bunch of chains but now uh, you know we know we're doing it in stage smart contracts and then front ends are catching up yeah. so talking through okay even though we're doing all this stuff how can we make some noise and get the right processes in place uh to to uh announce advocate get get it out there at what stage we are and what's relevant so i enjoyed mapping out a lot of that work as well so that we can execute and it becomes just part of the process. We've launched an objective, the, these things follow through, well, then we've got the front end on, this is what it means, and the, the this is the next steps that follow through. So, yeah, yeah. so for me, that was that was good. Yeah, and it's super yeah. exciting to see, you know, these assets being listed on balance, you know, one by one, and uh, it's, uh, it's fulfilling to see sort of the end product uh, you know, it's, it's it's a different type of feeling versus like, you know, in the past when we're working on the technology, you don't really, these are all sort of the more infrastructure projects. Mm. Um, we don't get to play around with it. It's not really meant for, um, you know, non-technical guys like me. Although, you know, obviously we have technical people who are doing a bunch of things, but it's not really that exciting, I think, until mm. you start applying the technology into real world use cases such as on balance and you know although it's like that seems like a very small change you know we all know the details that went into building um you know network on liquidity and you know seeing uh the nols build up seeing the ICX get slowly burned you know it's a mm -hmm. it's not much but it's a start and we see it grow we see the potential of it and yeah, I think all of that sort of the, uh, it, it's very exciting. And I, it was so evident at the workshop how, you know, people, you know, truly believed in what we're, we're, we're doing. And I believe mm. in what we're doing. You believe in what we're doing. And I think it's all about, you know, m trying to move fast. I think it's not like we're even like forcing anyone to, pushing anyone to move fast. It's like, everyone seems to be just self-motivated to mm. get things moving. Everyone's frustrated when there's bottlenecks and they want things moving faster. So it's, it's, it's really fun to see. Uh, yeah. I think 2024 is the most, it's, it's the funnest year, I think since, uh, yeah, the, since I've joined. Yeah. Uh, agree. I, I think uh, <laughs> as well, like compared to the previous workshop, this was more focused because like we have that one goal right it's balanced okay mm -hmm. everything how do we enable this there's a whole bunch of other stuff that happens in the background but this is the primary goal whereas in the past it more would have been very spread out right we have a whole bunch of things that are happening and um we probably weren't as you know we're acting more i, I think right now it's fair to say we're acting uh, we're foundation but because we have such a granular focus we're trying to execute mm -hmm. on this one thing right that that yeah. will make a bunch of things successful before there was uh, various things so from foundation it's just is things humming along is there any support needed a cps functioning can people get funding where they need to so i feel there's a small shift at the moment um and mm -hmm. uh, but that's what uh kind of this got I feel as well motivated the team because everyone kind of has a clear strategy to execute on, right? Um, this is yeah. it, balanced. But and we'll talk about a bit more. Uh, yeah, I, I think question you for you. Question. Yes, yes. Yeah, I me. mean, since we're we're sort of at the topic, I mean, when are we getting ETH on balance? Since we're talking about some of these assets. Yep. Oh, good question. So, 
the migration actually has just happened last night, the final piece of the uh, ETH migration from Icon Bridge. So this mm -hmm. was uh, this was one of the dependencies we had. Uh, we yeah. needed to migrate uh, the current ETH assets on Binance Smart Chain to the asset manager on balance. Um, and we actually hit a few hurdles. Can you believe it? So things didn't go as planned. Shock. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we've worked through it and, and got it across the line last night. So uh, we, what will now happen is early next week, um, so this will drop today. We're going to listen to the recording on the same day it was recorded. But early next week, we're going to have um, a change push via network vote for the network-owned liquidity um, to get voted on for the ICON network. And then as soon as that passes, we'll also, or it could be the other way around, but next week, early next week, we're going to have two votes balanced to deploy the ETH. Um, and the way we'll do mm -hmm. the uh, deployment is we will deploy on base and arbitrum first mm -hmm. uh, as one vote and um, and then we'll follow it up with optimism and ethereum just to make sure like you know things i was hoping to do all four in one go but uh, to uh, i've been don't, don't, the devs, don't be greedy don't yes be greedy. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know let, let's take it easy so we're setting all that up so next from next week um if everything goes to plan by the end of the week we should um everything should be live and we should be buying um eth and putting it into the lps nice uh, yeah it might be the perfect time to to do that because uh you know the market's down so um yeah, I, I yes. still think believe that we're we're still in a bull market. So I yeah. think we're just taking a little bit of breather. So it might be a good, like perfect time to kind of start this. Um uh what what about what about SWE? I mean Swiss uh Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So so things are actually going <laughs> really well. So um the SWE piece the X call contract is done, um, and this is from a development standpoint. Uh, so the X call contract is done. All the balance contracts are done. Uh, we've even finished the relay uh, module that needs to be made for integration into the relay. All that got wrapped up as of yesterday, mm -hmm. and from today on, the, the integration between all the components. So because they've all kind of been done. Uh, at different paces, the contracts and everything have been finished, but they haven't started integrating integration and testing to see if uh, they're communicating with each other. Uh, yeah. And that will kick off from today. So uh, development has gone well. Uh, some of the hurdles we faced, we actually got through quite quickly. So credit to the uh, to Venture 23 and stuff. The guys have been um, on fire lately. Yeah. Uh, but now when the integration, if Fingers crossed. Integration never goes well, so don't expect the worst. But um, the core development is done, and the integration would usually be we encounter bugs and stuff, and we'll fix this until um, we're ready to ship to testnet. But uh, SWE, in fact, I mean, I'll do you one better. So SWE is on track, doing really well. We're getting close. And Stella, for example, we've been working on that at the same time. Uh, yeah. And Stella is pretty much at the same part, even though we started SWE much earlier. The Stellar integration is exactly in the same spot where all the components are done and we're just about to start integration testing. Yeah. Is it just me or are we just getting faster in in, in this development? Uh, no, we are getting faster. Uh, I, I think, like, it's interesting. So if we were launching on Cosmos chains, uh, th this is part of, yeah. like, there's only so many chains we can launch on effectively with mm -hmm. the NOL model, right? We can't spread it too thin because we have to have good liquidity in each current pair. Like we don't want to have just 100,000 on, on 20 different chains, right? Mm -hmm. We want to have substantial amount of liquidity to make it worthwhile for us to compete in the space. So right. um, at the moment, the these bills are getting quicker, but they are also new languages. But all we're doing is translating and trying to kind of um, make sure that it executes and works on these new chains and follows that chain's language. If we were actually just deploying on like the 50 layer twos, if we weren't wanted to, we could deploy in the space of a week on the 25 layer twos that exist at the moment because that piece of work and infrastructure is ready and it's just kind of run the script, deploy, run some tests and we're live. 
But mm -hmm. um, we're not doing that, obviously, as I said, because if we don't have liquidity, it's kind of pointless deploying a new chain. So uh, circling back to your question, yes, we are getting we, we're we getting better at the team. Um, yeah. We haven't had turnover and things like that. So uh, it does impact our velocity so we can deliver quicker. The guys know what they're doing. They're more experienced. Like the Relay, for example, we're getting issues as wear and tear. We see more activity. Um, then we're able to fix these issues much quicker because uh, the guys have now got solid experience and they've been, you know, they've all the yeah. past issues. They know where to look and things like that. So, yeah, it is getting a lot better. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, from my understanding, hop chain integration is close. You mentioned Stellar, you know, we're caught up there, uh, yep. similar to Sui at, right now at this point. Uh, yep. Stacks, Stacks, is that is, is yes. going well? So Stacks is, Stacks is a bigger beast. It is, so mm -hmm. at the moment, we've just uh, started translating the balanced smart contracts, the language is mm -hmm. clarity, um, mm -hmm. stack. So it is in progress. It, it is a, a much more complicated um, translation. So mm -hmm. it will take a little longer, but that that is actively being worked on. I think um, end of this week, we'll have some kind of template of the balanced contracts ready, uh, but that will be done. Like, so the contracts then will work on the X goal piece. So it'll take a bit longer, but yeah, that work is is underway. So yeah. that will give that's us. The, that's the one I think our community should be very excited about because Bitcoin Layer Two is the the narrative, yeah. right? It's the the current narrative. Yeah. So, which you yeah, know, I think is very cool. I mean, there's a lot, a lot to I guess it's still way too early to kind of see how it will evolve. But you know, mm. I think there's legitimate excitement there. There's obviously, you know, Bitcoin being the the leader in our industry and space, right? There's a mm. lot of value that is uh, there to be uh, shared amongst other chains. So I think we are in a perfect position to try to, um, you know, kind of capitalize on this. And, you know, I think we have the best technology to do so, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think um, Stacks is a good one because it's it, they've been around a long time. You know, you mm -hmm. can actually do right. stuff. Their new their new upgrade will make their their basic. Um, it's a side chain slash layer two they call it, but it'll make it mm -hmm. um, far quicker, and that's what we're targeting. But I, I'm super keen for uh, you know there, there's a lot of EVM variants, uh, layer twos, or uh, side chains that operate um, via that connect to the Bitcoin core chain, although no clear, you know, there's more centralized versions of these currently that actually are live, but yeah. we don't want to just rush and do something. We kind of got to wait for a clear uh, kind of standout that uses the BitVM tech that's finally ready and it's official. Um, but that that's a great example of if something like that happens and a clear play is established if it's evm compatible we should be able to deploy quite quickly on there because our current stack should be compatible uh but from a risk perspective if there's one there is one chain believe it or not min there is one mm -hmm. new chain um it's a e bitcoin mm -hmm. evm but yeah it, yeah it, it would be very risky for us to just go and start uh, deploying network uh, icx and backing it with bitcoin and something happens to that chain so we just have to uh, it, with BTC, we have to just play a bit of a waiting game um, for yeah. a clear, yeah, entrant into the market. I mean, obviously, yeah, security is the topmost mm. priority. So, yeah, yeah, um, makes a lot of sense for sure. Mm. But well, one other thing I'll I'll tell you, Min, and we've had, and I can uh, mm -hmm. expand on. So, one of the cool things about our real focus, like everything we're doing and in the last update me and david were talking about concentrated liquidity because that that's a feature so right now we've been discussing we've been adding chains right every every piece of our work has either been interoperable um protocols that we're connecting to icon or we're translating uh, a current set of contracts into new languages so that we can get on more chains um one thing that we haven't been actively doing uh, is okay, how can we expand Balanced's feature set, right? And one of the things mm -hmm. we talked about is concentrated liquidity. Mm -hmm. uh, 
concentrated liquidity is a is a heavy beast for us, right? Like we could spend a year in development doing all the work, testing, et cetera. Um, now, it just so happens, and the community will know, like Convexus was funded initially, like a small amount of money mm -hmm. was given to the team. So they've done a fair bit of work, uh, which is concentrated liquidity. Uh, a lot of that code is pretty much done. Um, and right. they've actually reached out and... Uh, this is where we have a real focus vision. How do we make balance? Balance needs concentrated liquidity. This was done. This work was may have not gone. Like, you know, uh, the team couldn't launch it because of the situation, whatnot. But now we can actually work with some of the existing teams that have built stuff. We can actually, and that's what right. we're doing. I'm actually working with the team to to coordinate and pull together. Well, how can we integrate that code into balance? And it's going to save right. us this 9, 10, 12 month runway and we can execute it in three a few months time um so and we'll actually go and use some of this stuff through cps and get it done and get additional resources working to speed up some of these activities so um yeah. this is this is i'm quite excited this you know i'm quite excited i've been in, yeah. in the background uh, running around trying to try to, this opportunities come up it's like let's make this happen um so yeah, yeah exciting times if we can pull this off i mean yeah i mean it's it, it wasn't really planned that way but very excited mm -hmm. that um you know it's already a big part of the work is there open it's open source so you know we're mm -hmm. able to check the quality of the code and everything is good so far so yeah i mean like you said i think this uh is a huge huge plus and uh for for us and what i love about it is like yeah i mean i love how different teams in our ecosystem is just making contributions I, I i think like a lot of other projects a lot of other foundations are very jealous of like what we're doing here it's like we're a truly a decentralized project where you know we're getting a lot of contributions from our community right so you know i i think that's very exciting and i think this is a prime example of you know something that the community has built for their purpose didn't work out it's not wasted. We mm. are, you know, implementing this into balance and it's going to be for the greater good of the community. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't driven by the foundation or, you know, Parameta, for example, which is, mm. you know, what, yeah. you know, has been done initially, but now yeah. we're, we're getting a lot of these other contributors. Yeah, and, and and this is the thing, working with them. So we're not just taking and running with it. We're actually going, hey, you're the subject matter expert. Come yeah. on board. Let, let's work together and, and get this, which is something uh, I know in the early days when we're talking enshrinement and stuff, this was a very forefront on my mind, a worry of mine. It's like, well, this is great for Balanced and Icon, but what about our mm -hmm. other builders? How, how, do, how, do, how do we take them along or how, how can we make sure that... Um, it's not all hope is lost. So I, I kind of, what's happened here is great. And credit here is they've actually reached out. We haven't gone. They've actually reached out going, hey, we've done all this work. Like, let's use it, which is which has just been a huge tick to go, yep, yeah, let, let's let's um, get together and make this happen. So, uh, yeah, I, I could talk about this. I'm genuinely excited. <laughs> I'm keen to get this. So people will probably see in the next round of CPS, um, we'll, we'll have something in there to onboard a couple of yeah. few more people to integrate this and make this happen much quicker, which means the liquidity that the network owns is far more efficient. So suddenly we've got, you know, 500,000 liquidity, which could give us um, trading slippage of 3 million in liquidity. I mean, I'm just throwing out random numbers here, but that that's kind of yeah. the impact of concentrated liquidity. So yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll stop now, Min. Any other questions <laughs> for me since you're on fire? <laughs> oh no, I mean we'll just kind of play by ear. But uh um, okay. yeah. Anything for me? Yes. Okay. So so uh <laughs> workshop good. Now Japan. So you, you did go to Japan. There's seen I've seen a bit of Twitter mm -hmm. content you put out. But can you talk us through like Sure. Everything about yeah the trip. Yeah. What was the goal? Yeah. So, you know, obviously, I mean, big part of why I was able to go to Japan was obviously uh, one, COVID is sort of behind us, so mm. you know, check that. But you know, more than anything else, it was about um, you know we're we're obviously very close to the Grow team, the Grow the app that you know does um, provides yield. Uh, yield services, right? 
Um, so the growth team asked me, hey, Min, you got to get out to Japan. Things are very different than what you would remember um, back in 2018, 2019. Uh, that's when we actually had a, a team member present in Japan, sort of exploring uh, various opportunities. And eventually we end up leaving because uh, you know, overall, the, just like the regulatory environment, just the, you know, the, the Web3 ecosystem, it wasn't very developed. So we were way too early when we actually started looking into it. Um, so the growth team told me, man, you got to get out here, start meeting people because things are very different. Things are going to change. And, you know, I, they were hosting an event there as well, which I, which was a perfect place for me to go to an event. Uh, you know, the weirdly enough, like the, the, the guy who was actually the main organizer, uh, he was, he's the head of, um, uh, Japan for block gaming. Um, mm. he was actually, uh, my college friend. So that was just oh. out of pure luck. <laughs> so I got to, uh, I got the benefit of like catching up with him as well. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was like a super, uh, exciting you know, event. Uh, we also had like various side meetings, uh, met you know, different exchanges, different players in the industry. You know, still, I mean, there's obviously, um, you know, as I explained in Twitter, the, you know, there are definitely concerns and, uh, but there are some, a lot of positives about the Japan market, which, you know, there's clear regulation. There's, um, you know, it's just, unfortunate that these regulation is like un currently unfavorable, unfav especially like the tax uh, laws. For example, the capital gains tax for crypto in Japan is 55%, just mm. way too high. Um, so most people who are investing in, uh, you know, crypto, they are not trading it, they're just holding it. Um, they're just hoping for uh, they all know that this the the tax laws are going to change in the future so they're all sort of waiting for that time uh just holding um secondly the the staking rewards i mean just like here in the us and other parts of the world i think the the staking reward tax laws are uh, bogus right that's mm. like you, you can you know just paying taxes on every single reward that you receive is is just not manageable so I, so overall, like the retail market is avoiding, um, you know, trading crypto at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. But the regulator, the regulators know this. They know that uh, things need to change, uh, especially a lot of the Web3 talent is, talent is exiting uh, Japan at the moment. And they want to bring those people back with some incentives as well. So, mm -hmm. so I think this is uh, in, in terms of like public policy, you know, this is a uh, uh, you know, is it, focused at the moment. And I think the expectation is that this will change in the next year or two. So the question is, you know, I think in terms of like, you know, the, the retail interest is, is there, it's just, a, it's not just showing in terms of, you know, trading volume or, you know, but, you know, it, it, it is uh, very positive. Everything's moving in a positive direction. So, you know, just that kind of got me thinking about, okay, so what are, what are the opportunities here? So, you know, I can't go into too much details on those specific opportunities, but, you know, it's still very early stage, um, you know, still talking with some of these, you know, potential partners uh, for us to do some, something in Japan. So mm. um, I am, you know, one part I'm excited. The other part is I am being cautious um so we'll we'll see if uh, the opportunity is right for us okay cool so so yeah that's what you've been up to in japan uh then the other thing now uh, this is going to come out a bit weird but you know we're we're getting close right with balanced and kind of um getting to that point where soon we'll be able to go into these new communities etc but in the background, there's a lot of work actually being done, which I think so much people work. just don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and like one of them, a great example yeah. was the Stella Grant, right? Um, mm -hmm. That was that was cool to see. So 
Um, I'm, I'm guessing the team is in the background. And by guessing, I know the team is, but I'm not heavily involved in that side. But uh, we're actively pitching balanced along with Icon and what we can offer yeah. if... Um, yeah, so so Stella is a, is a representation of us actually going to various foundations and going, hey, we can deploy on your chain. This is this is the value add we give you, which being, you know, balanced relay integration, um, Icon's general GMP, um, and what you get out of it is IBC, EVM, uh, Java connections, and, um, you know, a, yeah. a hub for uh, assets. Uh, so... That that is currently the phase. I'm guessing uh, that that's the phase we're at at the moment as a team, right? From marketing mm -hmm. perspective. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any other things over there you'd like to expand on, or, or um, you I mean, you personally want to see? Yeah. Look, I mean, uh, one of the things that I've been able to do because you know, guys like you and other team members on Icon now, I think it's where we have this, like a lot of energy. I think everyone is sort of self-motivated to, you know, um, be independent. So, you know, I, I am able to spend my time to do what I do best, which is, you know, go out there, do sales, talk to people, talk mm -hmm. to investors, talk to fund managers, talk to exchanges, you know, uh, talk to some old, you know, you know, old friends, right? Who's still in some of these other mm. uh, crypto projects, right? So, so I'm doing a lot of these, and I obviously I talk to them about the new direction of Icon, and you know, uh, you know, we've refined our pitch. I would say to you know, basically, you know, talking about what we're doing, and mm. I think everyone that I speak to is very intrigued, very. You know, you know, I wouldn't say excited, but you know, they're they're interested, mm -hmm. and there is some slight. You know, they don't, they might not fully understand what at the the whole concept of enshrinement and what we're doing. It's a it's sort of a, it's not a totally new concept, but at the same time, it is executed in a way that nobody has ever seen before. So, mm -hmm. it's a bit complex so we we're, we created like a very complex system especially with you know as i mentioned the uh an exchange with nols with um you know we have uh bnusd here at play we have you know being able to mint bnusd you know which is a over collateralized uh, mm -hmm. stable coin so we have ICX, we have stable coins in there. Now we have what uh, we're putting in like AVEX and other, you know, uh, you know, Apex coins that could mint BNUSD into the portfolio, mm -hmm. right? So that is like, people are very excited about that. And, you know, the whole token burning mechanism, I6 burning mechanism that goes into play with trading fees, you know, using you know, our, you know, ICX emissions towards, you know, working capital into, you know, NOLs. I think that's a very interesting concept. And, you know, having a product like HANA, which is a mobile first product mm -hmm. that's going to be you know, fully integrating uh, what we, you know, the, the, uh, the balance protocol to make, you know, the trading experience very, uh, from a user experience standpoint, very unique. So all of that, right? Just like, it's like a boom, whole package. And when I explain this to them, it's, you know, I think everyone is very surprised that we've gone this far. Of course, like our, we're still growing. We, we've implemented this strategy pretty recently. So mm -hmm. we still need to, you know, scale up. We need to add more assets. We need to mm -hmm. do a lot of, you know, we still have a lot of work to do, but just the whole plan and direction, everyone's, when they hear about it, when they see it there, I think there's a lot of excitement, um, a lot of interest. So, you know, I think Stellar Grand is just like a great example of that, you know, interest. Um, mm. And I guess Stellar Grand was, 
you know, was actually a second grant, right? We got, we had a grant with Algorand, um, I mm. think a year ago or two years ago. So, you know, it's, you know, it's not the grant that matters, but it's the fact that, you know, you know foundations like other foundations are interested in getting involved, mm. right? Exactly. AVAX community exactly. is interested in getting involved. Injective team is interested in getting involved. Yeah. Um, that shows, I think that's evidence of that we are going in the right directions. People are excited, um, you know, and there's a lot of faith that what we're in, in what we're building. So I, I think that just, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I'll just stop here. But yeah, I think yeah. that's, uh, there, there's going to be a lot more to come. Um, yeah. And uh, the fact that like a lot of people are willing to work with us at this point, um, it, again, it's just very just shows that there's uh, we are kind of headed the right direction yep agree and and like some of these grants as well they're not necessarily always be grants they could be it the opportunities are wide like we can get liquidity incentives uh, mm -hmm. and by that i don't mean like for users to give away i mean more like locking uh, uh, a certain amount of liquidity for a period of time like there's so many angles to go down and uh, one of our implementations i was having a conversation yesterday uh, we're trying to uh, i've hinted at this as just talking to anton trying to uh, pencil in this token standard we're talking about to make it mm -hmm. easier for other protocols on different chains and uh, i don't want it to get complicated i want to keep it super simple it needs to be intertwined into balance we don't want to create an omni fungible token standard for everyone just to use i want it to be kind of hey you mm -hmm. use the effectiveness comes in by having your token listed on balance so it doesn't yeah. mean and and the, there's a big difference here like it doesn't mean we nol we don't have to acquire liquidity as a network for that token protocols mm -hmm. can still put their liquidity and provide incentives for their own tokens on balance as long as we're on their chain and we just yeah. need to make it easy for them and this is something our competition can't do um like um some of our competition not all of it a couple of them can but some of the, yeah. some of them can't but as you said when you package it in with uh you've got swaps but then you've got loans you kind of got this new feature product that you that no one else offers and that that is true no one offers a combined product like we can with balanced on right. new chains so um pre pretty uh I get too excited. It's just like so close. Okay. Uh, it, it, it is something very unique. And I think yeah. it's, uh, I think one of the comments, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too familiar with, yeah, uh, um, you know, the um, Dai and um, what do we call it? Oh, man, this can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Dai, but, yeah. 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 I'm maker. Not, yeah. Maker, uh, maker Dao, but it, mm. it is. Um, you know, I did hear comments that, you know, it, 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 like what we're doing could be what MakerDAO is actually, you know, th what they want to do in the future. Right. It's like, mm. I think we've, we, we have all the pieces together. MakerDAO mm. is very good at one thing, which is, uh, you know, they were the kind of the trailblazers of making this over collateralized uh, stable coin. Right. So yeah. they're very good at that. They're very big in what they do and, uh, and you know, but they're making some changes and, you know, we'll see how those changes will become. But, you know, for us, I think we've have that one piece, a stable coin piece, you know, but we have things that are much bigger, mm. much larger, uh, mm. that creates a lot more utility, a lot more activity. Um, so I think we're, uh, again, we're, I think there's a lot of interest in what we do. We're 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 yeah. doing so. I'm very excited. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, <laughs> I, I uh, sound like a broken record, but yeah, no, no, but we <laughs> we are we are we're, we're close. We're, we're excited. I think um, the only other thing, Min, uh, I noticed uh, like we have a LP page. Like uh, so, we've been talking about network owned liquidity. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the moment, the, and the concept there is simple, right? Users sell their liquidity to the network for ICX. At right. the moment, all those users are basically devs that interact with the smart contract because there's no front end. Um, however, a front end has been made. Uh, it hasn't been 
formally announced. It's it's pretty much there. Right. It's now doing internal. You know, have you used it? Have you have you looked at it? You got got any yeah, thoughts yeah. to share? Mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's. I think what's more interesting for me uh, is the backstory, which is like, you know, nobody. I, I never asked somebody to make this. I don't think anybody asked somebody to make this. It's just the. You know, one member of our team decided, oh, it will be really nice to have this page. So he just whipped it up. Uh, David just whipped it up and mm. uh, got other team members help on it and just just launched it within what, like a week, right? Yeah. So I, I think that just shows like the dedication of our team, um, you know, how we operate here, the how everyone's self-motivated to create things that are needed. I, I think that that, you know, aside from what that LP page is supposed to do, uh, just the fact that it was created and made mm -hmm. and made it easier for our community to use, I think that's very exciting. I agree. So it, yes, it will, we will launch officially to the community because everyone will be listening going, oh, where is it? Yeah. It's, just, it's just not <laughs> out formally, intentionally. Uh, one of the reasons as well with this particular piece, you'll see at the moment it's SICSB and USD, but the other assets will come online available once the front end for balance launches because ideally it, it's an arbitrage in a sense and you want to make sure that uh, whatever you're doing you have a way of arbitraging via other um, either dexes on other chains or central exchanges mm -hmm. and for that you need to be able to move like you know your avex token onto the avalanche chain uh, so yeah. stay tuned but yes uh, agree with me it was literally whipped up in a week and uh, yeah yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It looks good. And yeah, it, it's very easy to use. I've been using yeah. it. So this is what I've been waiting for. It's <laughs> like, yeah, come on, come on. Uh, so yeah. Okay, cool. I think yeah. that's all I had, Min. Is there anything else that I haven't quizzed you on or you haven't quizzed me on for that matter? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, very. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that the community actually uh, watches this i mean we always get what a few hundred a few thousand uh yeah. viewers and comments are always exciting uh yeah please leave uh please subscribe leave comments <laughs> ask your questions uh, and yeah. yeah so i think uh in that way i think we could you know if you have any questions feel free to tweet at me or fez and we could try to uh, answer those questions in our next video Agree, agree. I, I think uh, May May is shipping up to be an exciting month if everything goes well, as we talked about. ETH, start start building up liquidity for that. We see yeah. some front ends launch for balanced, oof, uh, and um, some HANA implementations uh, further, as you called out, like uh, in HANA, some of the balanced stuff even integrated a bit further, um, enabling cross-chain swaps within uh, HANA itself for users that just want to do it within yeah. their wallet. So yeah, a lot I feel May is going, if everything goes well, May is going to be a bit action packed uh, from my end. So uh, some of these things coming online. So I'm, I'm quite excited uh, to, for that to happen. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Awesome, well, awesome. You, you'll chat to David in May and uh, until then, well, we'll, yeah. we'll talk in the background, but yeah, officially on, on the podcast, we'll chat uh, the following month. Thanks, Min. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye guys. Take care, everyone. Right.